CBS Sports presents the National Football League. Today we're live at Mile High Stadium, the home of the Denver Broncos. And today they host the Washington Redskins in ideal weather conditions. It's hard to believe it's December in Denver and it's 53 degrees. Those are the teams who have clinched the playoff spots. Chicago, the Giants, these Redskins, and these Broncos, who are the AFC Western Division champions. That is the final score. We could have added the Jets to that list, but they lost to the Steelers today, 45-24. Chuck Knoll is 9-0 in his career against the Jets, so they'll have to wait a while. Good afternoon. I'm Pat Summerall. Washington and Denver, they're both in the playoffs. Denver, the champion, the Redskins, definitely the host of the wild card game in the NFC. With me, of course, is John Madden, and you go in with those uh, thoughts and those credentials about both of them already being in the playoffs. What about Washington? What do they really have at stake? Well, you know, we talked to Joe Gibbs last night. He was mad, and, uh, of course, they lost to the Giants last Sunday. We talked to him Friday night. Now, that's a long time to hold a man, and he's held it that long. And the way you can tell he was mad, he said, he said, I want to see what we do tomorrow. And that's the way a coach talks when he's still upset. And I think what he wants, he wants to see how they're going to bounce back today. I think he hopes that they bounce back in a big way. He says, because we'll probably be the wild card team. He said, but we don't want to be going downhill as we go into this game. He said, we want to be peaking because we know one thing, that the team that we have to play in the wild card is going to peak because they have to win the next two to get in the wild card. And that makes sense to me. I've always felt that the team that is playing best at the time, the team that is peaking, is a team that will go the farthest in the playoffs. John, what about Denver? They've won the AFC West. Now they're playing for the home field advantage throughout the playoffs. How do they approach this game? I think Dan Reeves was a little less mad than Joe Gibbs, but he was mad too. And he says, we have to take over control again. He said last week against the Chiefs, we didn't have control of that game. By control, he meant field position. He said, we can't give these Redskins a short field. In other words, we can't have the turnovers the way we did last week. He said our defense has to control their offense. We can't give them the big play. And then on offense, we have to be able to run. We have to get the running game going. We have to throw that short passing game, that ball control. So what he wants to do is they lost control last week against the Chiefs. He wants to get it back here today against the Redskins. Steve Cox will kick off for the Redskins. Ken Bell and Gene Lang back deep for the Broncos. Watching Cox in the warm-up, he was kicking him out of the end zone. Of course, we are a mile high, and the ball does go a little bit further. The shot goes back deep into the end zone, almost out. Gene Ling bounces it, downs it, and they'll start from the 20. John Elway will. He'll face a Redskin defense. That is a four-man front. Charles Mann, Butts, Darrell Grant. And Dexter Manley look for him to have a big day. Daniels, Olkowitz, and Milot, the linebackers. And the secondary, Green and Morrison this week, the cornerbacks. And the safety men, Jordan and Dean. Winder and Wilhite. And Elway back to throw on first down. Bat it down. The big paw of Dave Butts got up there to knock it away. The Denver offense, Elway the quarterback, Winder and Will Hype the runners, Vance Johnson and Steve Watson start wide. Up front, stuttered Bishop Brian Cooper, Lanier and Joey Hackett starting at tight end in place of Clarence K. Orson Mobley, number 89, is now splitting out wide to the right, and we'll see a lot of him today. Two wide receivers left. The handoff to Will Height. To Winder. With Will Height blocking. A gain of six. Curtis Jordan. Alvin Walton, by the way, is the other safety man for the Redskins. Third and four. And now the Skins make their wholesale changes on what they believe to be a passing down. Winder comes out. Will Height remains as the lone running back. Sampson comes in, and they go with four wide receivers. Elway <laughs> wanted to make sure everybody was picked up. Incomplete intended for Vance Johnson. Everybody was not picked up. I tell you, here's the pressure. Here's the first thing that we see. 
as we see the blitz coming from the outside, one safety coming to stun in the middle. No one picked up the safety blitz. That was Todd Bowles, who plays a safety and a linebacker. They didn't pick that up. They did have some guys free down the field, though, that Elway didn't see. Mike Horan, the third Bronco punter, punter of this year, back to kick to newly activated number 80, Eric Yarber, for the Redskins. They lost both their kick returners last week in that defeat against the Giants. And some pressure on Horan. He gets off a good left-footed kick. Yarber, signal, fair catch. Steve Wilson. 47-yard punt. No return, and that'll get it done. There's the Redskin quarterback. Jay Schrader in the defense. He'll be facing... And who knows how it'll line up. Rulon Jones, Cragen, and Townsend normally up front in the three. Ryan Mecklenburg, Ricky Hundley, and Jackson, the linebackers. Right and Harden, the cornerbacks, Dennis Smith and Steve Foley, the safety men. But they do a lot of shuffling and changing. Anthony Jones and Donnie Warren line up on the right side. They start with two tight ends. Hand off George Rogers behind the line of scrimmage as he hit by Ricky Hundley. He was the first man there and a gain of one. The Redskin offense, Schrader the quarterback. Rogers will be the lone setback. Monk and Clark wide. Warren and Anthony Jones start. Jacoby McKenzie in place of Russ Grimm. Bostic, Thielman, and Mark May. Dan Reeves over on the sideline, talking to his offensive unit. Second down. Rodgers again. Mike Harden, the first man there, with Hunley again. And Rodgers only got two. He'll go out, and Bryant will come in. What the Redskins are trying to do is get back into two tight ends. That time they had Anthony Jones in the backfield along with Rodgers, and he and made an eye formation. He was leading, but he didn't block anyone. And I know what the Redskins want to do. They want to get back in here and pound at these guys, and they have an idea, but the players aren't carrying it out. Ricky Sanders this time split out wide to the left. Monk in the slot to the right. Bryant goes in motion. Warren stays in the block. Schrader out of the pocket. Pursued by Broncos. Fires in the direction of Art Monk. But there are Broncos all over Jay Schrader. Freddie Gilbert was the leader of the pack along with Rulon Jones. You know, the interesting thing about this start, Pat, it's the same thing that happened last week. When they first started going back to pass against the Giants, they got big pressure. Here they started again. And the same thing happened to the Broncos against Kansas City, big pressure. And of course the Redskins had that blitz. So they're just starting up where they ended up last week. Maybe that's what they were talking about when they said we gotta get back on positive track. Cox, back to punt, standing at his own 15. Will Height will okay, return right, okay. for Denver. Okay. He's got room, handle it, you heard okay. Gerald Will Height gets outside the 35, Sean Burks down to make the tackle, a punt of 45 yards, a return of 12, so they net 33. Nothing, nothing. Jay Schrader, the Redskins' outstanding young quarterback, and he really does seem to be very much in command of himself and the whole concept of what they're trying to do. He really is an impressive guy for only, right now he started for one year, and as you say, he, he seems to have control of the whole deal. First and ten Broncos at their own 35. Elroy back to throw. Watson and yes, Morrison, the defender, a gain of eight. I'll tell you, this Steve Watson is a guy that's been catching passes for eight years for this Bronco team. He's always been the big guy, the guy that always gets open, the possession guy. The guy that third down pass, you need the first down, you need the touchdown. They've been looking to him for a long time. Gene Lang now in the backfield with Winder. Orson Mobley split, split wide to the left. Elway to Lang. Winder, sorry. Back. 
close to a first down, stopped by Rich Mallott. That's going to be, I believe, close enough to measure. You know, one of the things, uh, you know, Pat, since the Broncos don't have Clarence K in there, they're using two tight ends. One is Joey Hackett, number 85, who we see coming in now, and he's going to be the blocker. Then when they want to run or pass, then they put Orson Mobley in 89. Now they have both of them in at this time. But they're trying to use Mobley, splitting him out and trying to get the strong safety out of there so they can run. On the other side, they have Rimsburg and Stutter together. Elway quarterback sneak. I think the Redskins jumped offside. He got the first down in any case. Of course, that was a short yardage play, so then they had three tight ends in on short yardage. But on regular downs, they're either putting Hackett in or Mobley. Now, since Grimsburg was the tight end, Stuttered has to come out for a play. Is that right? Yeah, right. Stuttered became the tight end. So then Stuttered has to go out. First down. And Rimsburg has to stay at least one play. Rimsburg has to play one more play. Elway looking over to the sideline for the signals. All the plays are called from over there. Watson goes wide to the left. Johnson is split down wide to the right. Winder is the lone setback. A couple for Sammy Winder. Charles Mann. You know, Dan Reeves was saying to us yesterday, you hear all, they're stuttered back in, yes. Was saying you hear the publicity, the Valley who is about Manly, he said he was more impressed with Charles Mann. Yeah, and he was impressed with the speed of Charles Mann. He says, you know, he said he watched him on film. He said he never heard much about Mann. He said, but the more you watch, the more you realize that this guy is some pass rusher. Will Height is behind Elway this time. It's Johnson on the move. Mann is loose. The ball is loose. The Broncos come up with it. Stuttered, I believe, made the recovery. Almost looked like Mann kicked that ball out of Elway's I was going to say that. That was Charles Mann on the rush there. He'll be going against Ken Lanier, but it looked like he did kick the ball out of there. Look, he's coming to the top left of the screen, number 71. Billy Bryant tries to get him. I think he stuck that left foot out there and just popped it out. Hey, the Broncos got a big break there in recovering. It'll be third and 20. The Broncos from their own 40. Mark Jackson this time split wide to the right. Elway out of the shotgun. Redskins chasing. Man the closest. Elway hit it Mobley. Incomplete. Barry Wilburn was the closest Redskin defender. See the side judge down there threw his hat. That means one of the receivers went out of bounds. And I think that was number 80, Mark Jackson, went out of bounds. So what that is saying, when he goes out of bounds, yeah, you can see him right here, top of the screen. He was out of bounds. Now he can come back in to block, but he can't come back in to catch the ball. Of course, the ball was thrown to Mobley. See there, he's out of bounds right there. So the official throws the hat. He can't come back in and be a receiver. He can come back in and block, but he can't come back in and clip. I think he did. I think so too. Horan back to kick. Eric Yarber back deep for Washington. They're trying to set up a return. This time it's another good kick. Yarber came out of the pack, almost broke it. Got outside the 20, about the 22. That punt was up there for five seconds. 47 yarder. Yarber brought it back 10. 8.47 left in the first quarter at Mile High Stadium. It's nothing, nothing. Some of the most avid fans in all of football. 120 consecutive sellouts here at Mile High Stadium for the Broncos. I know how avid they are. I've been on that other sideline many, many years. I'll tell you, they, they didn't like the Raiders. And they let you know about it. They didn't hold back, huh? No. First oh, and 10. Terry Orr. Now in the game, that was Anthony Jones moving. Schrader fake. Intended Monk incomplete. Crossing. Rulon 
Jones applied some pressure. So did Mecklenburg. You know, it's a funny thing. You take a team like the Redskins that had everything going, had a lot of confidence, the Broncos did too, and they both lose the game, and you don't just get it back that easily. I mean, I think that the in the second half, I think the Redskins struggled last week trying to get it back. I have the feeling here in the first quarter of this game, they're still struggling trying to get it back. Again, they go with those two tight ends side by side to Schrader's left. And the handoff is to George Rogers. Rogers cuts back. Comes close to a first down. Maybe got nine. Tony Lilly made the stop. Well, that's the type of thing that they wanted to get back. You know, some power running. What they did this time, they had the two tight ends on the left side. They're going to run to the left. Now, they're just going to block down because R.C. Thielman and Mark May, you see them 69 and 73. They're pulling from the right side to lead them. So you had the two tight ends blocking down at the point. Then you had Mark May and Thielman, the offside, pulling to lead Rodgers. Now the Redskins send in Russ Grimm, McQuaid, McKenzie. Their biggest guys. What do they call this? They call it heavy jumbo. Their short yardage thing used to be called jumbo. Now with these guys, they got tons of guy in there. All the biggest guys in the team, they put them in. See McQuaid, 60, he's a tight end. McKenzie's the other tight end. Their guards and tackles put in all their offensive linemen, big tight ends. Other than Schrader and Rogers, who will carry the ball, the smallest guy is Warren at 250. Third and short. Heavy jumbo. Trader, long count, hoping the Broncos will jump. They don't. He rolls out, and he's got some room. Trader's got the first down, out of bounds, front of the Redskin bench at the 48-yard line, chased down by Ricky Hundley. Trader almost fell down as he rolled out. What he did is, look, he got everything going this way. He faked and then did a naked bootleg out here. Now watch this side come in, and he gets free out there. But as you say, he almost fell down. Watch the fake there. Boom. The corner comes in, and Schrader outruns the outside. Dennis Smith had to do a quick change of direction, but Schrader picked up 16 and got the Redskin first down. Rodgers still the running back. Warren moves. Rodgers runs. And gets about eight before Mecklenburg trips him up. Officially, he got seven. This is the type of thing that Joe Gibbs wanted. You know, to be able to get down there and pound on something. You know, where you don't have to throw, you don't have to let them just come and tee off on you the whole game. Where you can run at them, pound on them, calm that defense down. He was mad last night. Second down and short. Two, two and a half. Rodgers again. And he's got the first down and more. Bounces down to about the Bronco 35 after a gain of eight. Again, it's Tony Lilly on the stop. Well, he's running right in there behind McKenzie and Jacoby. You see that? He starts in there behind that thing and makes a nice move there. Starts in, bounces out to the left side, and is able to pick up that first down. I'll tell you, I saw him in the hotel last night, George Rogers, and he was a determined guy. He wasn't smiling. <laughs> he said, I'm going to have one tomorrow. Well, they're going to give him a chance. Later, quickly outside Clark, who had it, lost it, and took a shot to the head. Dennis Smith on the coverage, and Clark was really hammered. That is a tough thing because he wasn't in a position to accept a hammer. I mean, watch him. He's down, and he's going to get bent backward. Watch him. He has to come down to catch the ball. He gets down. He's down on both knees, drops the ball. Then he gets bent over. You see what I mean? And he already has a pulled hamstring. And I bet you that's where the whole pressure goes is you get knocked back over that way. In fact, they're checking his ankle there. Well, he got bent back, so you never know what's got to give. Something does when you can make that kind of move, doesn't it? Still Washington, Denver, nothing, nothing. 641 left first quarter. 
Gary Clark being helped to the Redskin bench. Obviously a problem with his left ankle, which was bent backwards. They said he was in that position where when he took that hit, something had to go. And of course, that's a big loss. Oh, Gary boy. Clark had caught 74 passes this year. Ricky Sanders has taken his place. Hand off Rogers, Tanner Trey. Rogers inside the 30, about the 28. Tripped up by Ken Woodard, a gain of seven. That old familiar Redskin play. But here's the thing that they do. You know, they take this offside, Thielman here, May here, and they're going to lead this way. Rogers takes a little counter step and gets right in behind him. See now the offside will pull, there they go, takes a little counter step in there behind May, gets that kick out, and is able to get those couple of yards. Third down and three. Brand has replaced Rogers. Slater back to throw. Has to get rid of it in a hurry. But gets it to Kelvin Brand. And Brand is out of bounds at the Denver 15. Knocked out by Tony Lilly. A pickup of 14. He had to get rid of the ball because Ken Woodard, the linebacker, number 52, watch him, is real close to him. He comes free there, so he has to get rid of the ball. And he does the smart thing. He finds Kelvin Bryant, the guy who Woodard just ran by. I don't know if Bryant was supposed to block him or not. But that's the old rule. If the guy doesn't block him, then throw it to him because he should be open. At the 15, then. Rogers back in. Gary Clark leaving in the wheelchair. They give to Rogers. Rogers down to about the 12. Bryant was in the game. The two of them at the same time. There's Gary Clark. I'll tell you, there is a tough guy going off the field. And you know that the last place he wants to be sitting is in that chair right now. He's a real competitor. He's He's played at least half this season with a pulled hamstring. He hasn't been able to practice all week. He just watches, and then every Sunday, he's been able to gut it out. You know, it's not always those big guys that are the tough guys. Sometimes the toughest guys are the guys like Gary Clark. Sanders splits wide to the left this time. Rogers is behind Strader. Second down at seven. Outside of Merck. Monk is hit by Lilly just as soon as he makes the catch. Maybe he got two yards out of it. But here is where those Broncos really get tough. You know, they've always been that. They've always, the closer you get to the goal line, the closer this Bronc, the tougher this Bronco defense is. They've always been that way. That was one of uh, Joe Gibbs's concerns last night. He said, I hope we can move the ball. But the closer we get, the tougher they are. And, of course, there's the architect of this defense, Joe Collier. He's the assistant head coach and the head of the defense. Clint Didier is in the game for the first time. He's in the slot to the right. Schrader. Down the middle, touchdown to Sanders from 10 yards out. I'll tell you, that's the way to do it. If you can't pound it in there, get the three guys out there. They put Didier in there. He has a broken hand. He missed the last two weeks. He runs an outside pattern. And you see Ricky Sanders, who just took Gary Clark's place. He runs the post. Then you see, see Schrader drill it in there. And so the Redskins take the lead with 4.18 left in the first quarter. Zendejas to try the extra point. It is not good. Schrader was the holder of the snap. Appeared to be a little bit off mark. It looked, we'll like, look at it. It looked like Zendaya slipped a little, too. So the red oh. bell laying back deep. Cox's kick sails through and out of the end zone. They'll bring it back to the 20. The Redskins scoring drive. 11 plays, 77 yards. They kept it four minutes, 29 seconds. And the Redskins, when they score first, the record is 36 and 2 since 1983. You know, that's probably pretty good, but I'll tell you another thing. I've always known when you miss an extra point, somewhere it jumps up and bites you. 
Winder is the lone setback. Mobley on the move. Elway has some time now. Looks and looks and looks and finally guns it in the direction of Mobley. And when I say gun it, he can gun it. That's one thing. He throws it so hard, you always have the chance for two of them to get it. Here's the blocking here on Dexter Manley. That's Dave Stutter, number 70. Last week, Brad Benson made NFC Player of the Week Holy blocking him. Number 70 now Stuttered is going back. Down. I'll tell you, they just called him holding for that. I didn't see a holding there. In fact, I'd like to see that one again. I think maybe when Manley went down, maybe they thought that was holding, but watch Stuttered. Boom, he's up in there. That's okay. Hand in there. That's okay. His hand's off him. Oh, that's a bad call. I don't care what you say. Makes it first and 20. No way. Hands off to Wilhite. And Dave Butts wraps that up. I'll tell you, Dave Butts wraps up a lot of them. Here Butts is right here. And when he gets something going there, you better slow him up before he gets started. Watch that. It just takes a little inside move. That was Mark Cooper trying to block him. He looked like uh, Cooper looked as if he was trying to get position on butts. Yeah, you don't. The first thing you do on butts is you got to tie into him. You got to stop that thing. You can't step for position. Position's not a factor when you're blocking him. No, I mean, he's so big, you, you already got position any way he goes. Mobley on the move. Elway back in his own end zone. Going deep. Intended for Mark Jackson. That was Daryl Green back there with him and right with him. I'll tell you, those are two of the fastest guys in the NFL. You know, that Mark Jackson probably has more speed than anyone on the Bronco team. And, of course, Daryl Green was in a race in the offseason, and he was the fastest guy in football. So that could, if you time that, they, they probably ran, as I was watching them here, and, you know, just timing it myself, I think they ran 4-3 in that 40, both of them. I think you're right. Redskins have their pass rushing unit in there now. Hamill, Marcus Cook on the inside. Grant and Butts out. Here's Elway back in the end zone to Will Hyde. He'll get some breathing room, but not close to a first down. Todd Bowles tripped him up, a gain of 13. Well, I'll tell you the thing that they did is they got some room for their punter. He doesn't have to stand in the end zone now. Of course, the punter's back 15 yards from the line of scrimmage. So he'll be just in front of the goal line. Wind, well, there isn't much. Seven miles an hour, they said, when the game began. But if you look up on top of the scoreboard, flags aren't moving. Horan. And all kickers love this altitude here. Oh, yeah. Your average goes up. All you have to do is hit it. Yarber back deep. Allen didn't turn over. Flag down. Robert with room gets to midfield. Darren Como tripped him up a 45-yard punt, but let's see what the penalty is. Jerry Seaman is the referee. Well, it has to be that illegal block, wouldn't you think? That's a very popular one. Holding. Holding. That's the same thing. If you get in better position, it's a legal block. If you can't get in a position to illegally block them in the back, then you hold them. We have a post-possession foul, holding number 35 during the kick. First down. I think it was the guys out here that were trying to hold up the outside guy. It was Keith Griffin they got it on, and... I think they were trying to hold out. You know, the only two guys can go down to the outside guys. I think they tried to hold them up, literally. Mecklenburg this time as the Broncos go with four down linemen. Mecklenburg as a linebacker. They give to Rogers right side. And whatever defense that was, Joe Collier and his unit got the right setup. Tomorrow on CBS, don't forget that big match. In New England, the 49ers and the Patriots. It begins with the NFL today, but both those teams 
The Niners and New England still in the playoff picture. Both need to win. And I'll tell you, the Redskins are probably going to be the wild card team. And Joe Gibbs told us one day, we, we don't want to see the 49ers again. Monk comes in motion. Again, it's counter Trey. Rodgers behind the two blockers from the other side. And this time, Mecklenburg and company stack it up. The report on Gary Clark from the Redskins is that he has strained ligaments in his left ankle and will not return. And that indeed, as John Madden said, is a, a huge loss. That well, guy had been Mr. Know, Clutch. You know, sometimes that sprained ankle is worse than a break. You always hear that, that it takes longer to heal than a broken bone in there. Third down and eight. Less than a minute left in the first quarter. Straighter, back to throw. Gets it outside, intended for Kelvin Bryant. Bounced off his thumbs. Steve Wilson was the nearest. Must have stung him a little bit. Schrader throws it hard, too. I'll tell you, watch Joe Jacoby block against Carl Mecklenburg. Here's Jacoby, here's Mecklenburg. Jacoby does a nice job on him. Last week, he had a little trouble. He had a lot of trouble with Lawrence Taylor. Took some criticism for it. This week, he's getting Mecklenburg, but he's able to stay with him and drive him by and let Schrader get rid of it. Steve Cox, the punter. Will Height, that good kick by Cox. Will Height at his own 17. Room and blocks. He had one man to beat. That was Alvin Walton. And Walton stayed right with it. 52-yard punt by Cox. I'll tell you, that Gerald Will Height is something for this team, Pat. He's, he's their leading receiver. He's a blocker. He's a punt returner. I'll tell you, just about everything he does. If it weren't for John Elway, he'd probably be the most valuable player on this team. And he's not that big. Uh, not to be a blocker. He got some good blocks on that return, though. I remember when he was the number one draft choice out of San Jose State. A lot of people thought the Broncos made a mistake. Watson was the move man. The handoff is to Lang. Straight ahead, and he got two yards. Daryl Grant tripped him up. Gary Clark, we told you had strained ligaments in that left ankle. They've got it iced down. But, as John said, sometimes that can be worse than a break. And probably you talk about MVPs. I think Gary Clark has to be one of the MVPs on this team. Mobley split wide to the right. Coleman out there with it. Nothing. Maybe one. Quarter number one is over, and the score is Washington six. The Denver Broncos nothing. Won't get it done. Three wide receivers come wide to the left. They're going with four on third down and seven. Elway. Is going deep. Pass almost picked off as intended for Mark Jackson. No flags are down. The Redskins, Barry Wilburn, back in good shape. Just to go back to the injury situation as concerns Gary Clark, it's not as bad as the first report that we had. It's an ankle sprain. But there is no ligament damage, so that's encouraging. Uh, I think it's the same thing. I think a sprain and sprained or ligament, I think that's all the same thing. The word is just that it's not broken, it's a sprain. And you usually, what do you sprain? I think you sprain ligaments and stuff. You don't sprain bones. Moran aiming for the sideline. Yarber feels it, Bear catches it. The Redskins will take over at their own 13. No flags. 40-yard punt. Redskins leading 6-0. Touchdown pass from Schrader to Sanders. Yeah, now there's Dave Butt standing there, sitting on the bench, relaxing there. You know, last week, 
the giant offensive line coach Fred Hoagland said that he's a, got a big old head on him, weighs 50 pounds. Butts got upset about that, called it pumpkin head. So he went and weighed his own head. And he said his head only weighed 12 pounds. I think it's more than that, though. I think uh, somewhere in between. I would bet closer to 50 than 12. Here's Schrader back to throw on first down, looking for Monk. A collision and a flag. Well, that looks legitimate. Dennis Smith, the defender. Oh, and then they threw another flag. Oh, it was the same That's guy. Number 49 defense. First down. Same guy just picked it up and threw it down again. That was a double dipper, but looks like Smith gets there before the ball does. Oh, that's pretty close. I don't know. I don't think that's as bad as it looked when they did it. You know, because if he gets there first before the ball, he can't hit him. That looks like about the same time. That ball was thrown behind Monk. And into Smith, and Smith has a right to go for the ball. First down, Redskins, nevertheless. The handoff is to Rodgers. Rodgers cuts back inside, hit by Simon Fletcher first. And down he goes after a gain of five. See Simon Fletcher come running down that line. No one blocked him. He had Rodgers all, all zeroed in, didn't he? Well, that really is how you beat that play, that counter tray, when they pull the offside lineman. You got to have somebody to count that guy chasing. And that's probably why they put in a Simon Fletcher because he has that speed and he can run it down from the backside. Second and six, 46. Schrader, a mix-up. And all he can do is look for some daylight and doesn't see anything but orange. And so down he goes. And he turned the wrong way. I think that was Schrader's fault because it looked like the ball was supposed to go to the right. Everyone else went to the right. Schrader went to the left, and he didn't have any guy there to hand it off to. So that brings up a third down and eight situation. Kelvin Bryant in the game. Monk goes in motion. Schrader back to throw. Monk spins away from one defender and gets another six yards out of it. Tony Lilly was the first defender. Hey, Monk is out there. He starts in motion, then he's going to be out there working on Mike Hart, number 31. He drives him up. He knows where the first down marker is, stops, hooks to the inside, works back to the outside, and he just knocked Harden off with his right arm. That was a defensive pass rush move. But I'll tell you, Schrader drilled that ball. Oh, boy. That's where you can tell the strength of a quarterback's arm is throwing the out. Haynes has replaced Harden. As the Broncos' right cornerback, this is Rodgers at or behind the line of scrimmage and knocked backwards by the big crushers. You know one thing about this Bronco defense and Joe Collier, they play a different defense on every down. And most of these different defenses play different people on every down. So by the time you figure out who's playing where, the guy's not there anymore. There's a new guy there. That's one of the more confusing things about it. Different defenses and different numbers. Second 11. Later back. To Bryant. Kelvin Bryant inside the Bronco 25 and up for a Redskin first down. Ken Wooder chasing him. Bryant, the last couple of weeks, has really come on. I'll tell you the other thing, you know, Joe Gibbs said last week he was waiting for him to come on. Last week he thought he did come on. But I'll tell you what Joe has to be happy with here is his pass protection. Joe Jacoby last week, as I said, he drew Lawrence Taylor. It was a long day. Now today, he's drawing Carl Mecklenburg a big part of the time, and he's taking care of that business. First down at the Bronco 25 for the Redskins. They again move Monk. Schrader fakes, back to throw. 
gets the screen pass out to Rodgers. Not many blockers out in front. Rick Dennison on the tackle. We're at Mile High Stadium in Denver, Colorado. Ideal weather. Redskins scored on a pass from Schrader to Sanders. Then Zendejas missed the extra point. George Rogers so far has been busy. Has 44 yards rushing. And the Redskins lead it 6 0. Second down and six. At the 21 yard line of Denver. Monk. To about the 15 and about a yard shy of a first down, Ricky Hunley made the stop. You know, that was interesting how Monk came in motion, Pat. He starts here. As he's in motion, he's watching the secondary all the way. Then he goes all the way here, up, and in. He decides as he's going in motion and watching what he's going to do when he gets up there. Watch your motion. See him look. He's looking to see what coverage he's getting. Now he sees the whole inside, comes up, stops, goes back to the inside. Third and one. Rodgers will score. 15 yards out, George Rogers bolts into the end zone. And that was that heavy jumbo formation. They had all big guys. Look at those big guys. There's Rogers. He's there. He's the only guy that's not a big guy in there. He's the guy that's going to get the ball. Look at left. He has Donnie Warren, his tight end, in the backfield. He leads. Warren's the guy that got that kickout block. He Rogers was in there. He felt comfortable. He says, I got that big old heavy jumbo in front of me. I'm going to go jumbo left. He was looking over there, and he felt comfortable with all those big old guys. Rogers is only 230. Then <laughs> The extra point is good, but not really very good. Watch number 85, Donnie Warren. He's the tight end. Watch the lead here. The block. He gets, he kicks out. That allows the hole for Rogers to go through. And that was a huge opening. 13-0 Redskins. Kickoff is handled by Ken Bell. Bell had an alley and took advantage of it out to about the 35 before he tripped up by Dean Hamill. 34-yard return. That's the Washington scoring drive that made it 13-0. Rogers, 15-yard run, 16th touchdown of the season for George. Denver's first four possessions have not been very lucrative. Four punts by Horan. Well, you know, that's what we talked about. That's the same thing that happened to them last week. Their, uh, their first series, they had something go wrong all the time, and Kansas City built up the lead, and they couldn't get back. Elway back to throw. Manley forces him up into the pocket. Flags go down. Elway comes out of there. Chased out of bounds by Darrell Green and Neil Olkowitz. He got seven, but that is probably going to be holding. That'll be holding against the Broncos, and that one will come back. Be interesting if it's against Dexter Manley to be on Stuttered. That would be the second penalty Stuttered had blocking Manley today. Manley does get a lot of that, where the guy blocking him gets a lot of penalties on him. Illegal use of hands to the face. Number 54 offense, still first down. So on Keith Bishop. Bishop would be the guy blocking Daryl Grant. You know, one thing about this, this line of the Redskins, they have big guys, Grant and Butts, in the middle. And they get to push up the center. Then they have the fast guys, Manley and Mann, coming from the outside. All the way back. Manley chasing again. Outside intended for Winder, but all the way had a hurry. Manley with the heat. I tell you, Manley is starting to get it going now. I mean, he's rushed there. He just takes a bull rush into Stutter. Pushes him by, and he's right there at Elway's feet. 
Usually he uses the speed and goes around. That time he just took on Dave Stutter, boom, and then got beyond him. You know, going into last week's game, he was the leading sacker in the NFL. Coming out of the game, he was second. Lawrence Taylor was number one. Second and 20. Will Hyde from Elway and a gain of 10. Ken Coffey made the stop. John Madden was talking a minute ago about all the things that Gerald Wilhite does. One thing that's not inclu included in there is blocking. Well, I'll tell you, you know, that's that's why a guy is, is so valuable, you know, that it does those things that you don't always see, like the blocking when Sammy Winder runs it, the blocking he has to do on pass protection, receiving, the return. You put it all together, and that's a valuable deal. Elway from the shotgun for Mobley and Orson Mobley comes down with it Todd Bowles knocked him out of bounds Mobley weighs about 265 there is an interesting guy a 265 pound tight end who plays H-back and they like him because he's a receiver you think of a 265 pound guy as a blocker like another tackle but this guy is a tackle who's running like a wide receiver. Elway this time had good pass protection. See, they keep Elway, I mean, they, they keep Manley off him just long enough for Elway to get rid of the ball. But that's a big target. I mean, a big old 260 pound, 65 pound guy out there running patterns. He got 25 on that completion. Redskins showing blitz. Penalty markers, any pass is complete. The mark Jackson Elway threw it going backwards. I think Dan Reeves was saying that sometimes Elway is like Houdini. I think he was like Houdini on that one. Neil Okowitz, the middle linebacker, came on a blitz. No one picked him up. Offside, defense, penalty decline, first down. In fact, they were offsides to get to the rush. And all Houdini going backwards got rid of that ball and completed it. The Redskins never really got set on defense. Manley was still moving around when the ball was snapped. And so was Milot. First and ten as they declined the penalty. Balls at the Redskin 30. Washington leading 13-0. Elway doesn't like what he sees and calls a timeout. He had 12 men on the field, Pat. He had two tight ends. One him in Denver. Rich Carlos. Now there's a new one, Pat, where the kicker has two helmets. One on his head and one in his hand. Well, the other one has to be for the holder. I don't know why. That's a new deal for kickers. Winder. Stopped by Butts. A loss of two. Tomorrow here on CBS again. The Giants. In the playoffs, entertain the Cardinals. They had a tough time with them first time around. 13-6, I think, with the score. Well, if you're going to be a championship team, if you're going to be a Super Bowl team, like the Giants have a chance to be, you can't have trouble with teams like the Cardinals. If you can't beat those guys, then you don't belong there. Second down and 12 for the Broncos. All the way back to throw. Steps up. Down the middle intended for Gerald Wilhite. Well covered. Joe Collier on the sideline looking at the Redskin defensive alignments and whatever else concerns him. Well, he's looking to see what the Redskins were doing formation-wise. You see now, those are the Polaroids that they took during the first quarter. Those are all the Redskins formations that he has to adjust his defenses to. So he'll have like first down, second down, third and long, third and short, goal line, all the situations on picture. Third and 12. Elway retreats. Into the pocket and out he comes. Into the end zone. Incomplete. He had pants. Johnson, he just couldn't get it to him. He was open and well open. I'll tell you, he drilled that ball. He found Vance Johnson. Vance Johnson has great speed. He's coming across that end zone. But watch, watch Elway and his throw. He gets flushed out. 
Now, when he gets flushed out here, he's more dangerous than he is in the pocket. Now he finds Vance Johnson. Watch him drill that. I thought, I thought that, the, that he had a chance to get it, but he didn't. The ball bounced in front of him. Kubiak is holding. That was his helmet that Carlos had a minute ago. Because Carlos doesn't wear the uh, Kubiak doesn't wear the helmet on the sideline. Carlos is not good from 48 yards out, and the Redskins still lead 13 to nothing with 7:49 left to play in the first half. And I think that's the most important thing in these last two weeks is these teams that are in already establish themselves as getting better, not just holding on. Rodgers is deep. Schrader fakes to him. Anthony Jones has it bounce to the ground, and he's down. Rick Dennison was the Bronco defender. Mention that the Cowboys still mathematically at least, although it's very slim, have a chance. Skins lead at 13-0, but he took a, a vicious hit right on the knee. Well, it was number 55, Rick Dennison. After Jones drops the ball here, doesn't get it, drops it, look, he's standing there. Now, Dennison, 55, comes in and hits him right on the knee. And it looked like that hit, you know, that foot, the right foot was planted, and he got hit right on the knee. Now, the foot didn't give, and the only thing that could give is a joint. And they're putting one of those braces right now on Jones's knee. See, the first thing they want to do is immobilize it. Got his shoe off. Now the bandage. And then the stretcher. While they administer, here is the playoff picture in the AFC. The division leaders right now, offensive scheme. I should say, along with Donnie Warren, they played two at all times, and that's been their football. Now they only have one in there with three wide receivers. Raider draw play to Bryant. Melvin Bryant. Outside the 35, about the 38. Rick Dennison made the stop. Bryant got six. Here goes Anthony Jones. Headed into the locker room. You know, I think one of the big losses for this Redskin team was Clint Didier because, as Joe Gibbs said, it takes two guys to replace him. One is a receiver. They try and use Orr in the receiving. And then one is a blocker where they tried to use Jones. There is Didier. There's a broken bone in his hand. Joe Gibbs was saying he can't block anybody yet. He can catch. Art Monk in motion. Bryant again. Down the sideline, and he lowers and lets go on Steve Foley. Yeah, one thing I, I think we have to mention is the Redskin offensive line took a lot of abuse last week. But they've come back this week. I mean, they have really controlled this defense. Watch this pass protection here. Boom, boom. They got him up there. There it goes. They put Rulon Jones up on Jacoby. He's taking care of that. They're making solid, giving Schrader time so that Kelvin Bryant can do this. Uh, that was a good unload. That, that registered 19. On any scale. Rogers is in for Bryant now, and Orr is in front of him. Monk is the motion man. Sanders puts wide to the right. Rogers. George Rogers trying to get to the outside. Does for a moment. Knocked out of bounds by Rick Dennison. After he got four. As you look at Rulon Jones here, he's he's their big pass rusher, leading sacker of the Bronco defensive team. And they move him around. He always plays left end on running downs. And then on the passing downs, they move him to tackle and to the other end. That last pass rush, he was over there against Jacoby. This time, he's lining up against May. Second down and six. Redskins leading 13-0. 6-15 left to play in the first half. Schrader, all kinds of time. Intended for Monk. Best he could do with that was bat it down. He really fired it. You know, Jay Schrader, when we talked to him last night, he was really a confident guy, wasn't he? I mean, oh, he was yeah. like, you know, no worries, nothing bothers me, yeah. Got to go out to dinner. We met his dad in the lobby, 
His dad looks like a, a retired defensive nose tackle. That looked like he'd been down there in the pit. Yes, he did. Yeah, big old guy. Jay was just saying, hey, look, I made some bad reads last week. I got to do better. Yeah, but he was kind of laughing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we'll get him. <laughs> They're down. Broncos on a blitz. Somebody might come clean. It was Monk. Pass is high over his head. Dennis Smith. But again, I'm still impressed with the job. Watch this offensive line. It's a four-man rush plus a safety blitz. But watch how well they pick it up. It's a stunt. They're solid there. They pass everything, pick everything off, and let Schrader gun that thing out there incomplete. Kelvin Bryant did a heck of a job. Hey. Dejas with Schrader holding. This will be from 53 yards out. Steve Cox usually tries him from this far out. But this is in Dejas. Good hold. Not such a good kick. Score remains 13 nothing Redskins. 5:59 left to play first half. Ball next. Right now, pro football. And Elway is down in the arms of Charles Mann. Redskins second sack. That's why you like to have that speed in a defensive lineman. You know that when the quarterback breaks away, he has the speed to get him. And it looks like man hurt himself on that play. He asked for help from the sideline. I think he may have caught a foot right in that uh, area there. Man, 6'6", 270. Cook has taken his place, Marcus Cook. Second down, Elway retreats again. Will Height. Man's right shoulder bothering him. Rich Malak knocked Will Height out of bounds after enough for a Bronco first down. Redskins leading 13 0. Man had to get back in there. You can't. The rule number one in the defensive lineman's playbook is. Never let a quarterback knock you out of the game. <laughs> I mean, if the quarterback knocks you out of the game, you never get to play again. You can't go dress or shower with the guys. Unless it's humiliation. Oh, terrible. Oh, L.A. draw play. To Winder. He crosses into Redskin country. Stopped by Darrell Grant, a gain of four. That's the thing that, you know, that Dan Reeves was talking about, and he's really not getting it today as we see Sandy Winder has rushed four times for 11 yards. He wanted to get back, get a running game going, get a ball control type game going, and, and he hasn't done it yet in his first half. Mobley now, that 265-pounder, is put wide to the right, but they come the other way, or try to, and Winder's got no place to go as Dexter Manley comes crashing through and takes Winder down. Monty Coleman helped him out. Well, you're never going to have a chance if you let penetration come like this. Manley gets five yards into the backfield. He took an inside move on Dave Stutter. Stutter stepped to left again to get position, and then Manley took the inside. You always make contact first, then get position. Don't go for position first, because that's what happens to you. You wind up blocking air if you do that against a guy like Manley. Yeah, and then that, that allows penetration. Heck, Manley was five yards in that backfield. Will Height back with Elway. Third down for the Broncos. They need 17 for a first. Mobley. And he's got it up. Big Orson. Oh. They paid a little bit of a price, too. I'll tell you, they have to because when you get that thing, that locomotive coming across there, it's like a prison break. Watch this thing. I mean, he's, he's coming across the field going full go. See him crossing there? Boom, look, it takes three guys. One, two. Oh, that third guy didn't want any part of it. But two guys got him down. Orson from Salem College, 6'5", 256. But he is bigger than that. Well, that's what they weighed. I mean, when they weighed him in two months ago, he's 265 now. 
Here's Elway back. Has to step up and will have to come out of there. Elway to about the 34. Olkowitz around his ankles, but he scrambled for five. I think one thing, if you talk about this Bronco offense, and Dan Reeves says the problems we've had haven't been the running game with our runners or the passing game with our quarterback or receivers. He said it's just our line. He said we just can't keep the guys healthy. Last week they lost Powell. Paul Howard, their starting right guard. And this week they're starting with Mark Cooper, but he says we always have a different group in there, and that group really hasn't gelled He's yet. He's a big sure. believer, and you've got to have confidence in the guy next to you, and that really is a secret. That's the thing, because when you get those kind of to do going into the game, the Redskins have done it, the Broncos haven't. Dan Reeves said we've got to be able to run. They're behind 13-0. Side and oh, is Vance Johnson nailed by Tim Morrison? And Vance gets up a little slowly. That was interesting. The beginning of that play with Daryl Green going with the man in motion, and then he had to spin around and come back. And I always saw it and got the ball out there. Johnson may not be happy that he did. Hey, watch his hit. He just he never had a chance. Just as he turned, there was Tim Morrison. I think they're saying that that was a complete pass, Pat. They're spotting the ball right there where Johnson was hit. Redskins are arguing about that. I don't know if he had control of it or not. There it is. Listen. The official indicates, the official on the spot indicated, yes, it was a catch. Yeah, but I think they have to look at this one in instant replay. I don't think it was a catch. I don't know that he had control. You have to come down to have control, both feet moving up the field. I'm sure they're doing a review right now. Now he has the ball. I don't know. I... The word from the booth is that it's inconclusive. What's the official now? Ball goes out of bounds. And that official closest ruled that it was a catch, and the evidence says inconclusive. It's a first down Broncos. Yeah, they always say the official was right on top of it. He was. I don't think that makes him right all the time. Being on top of it doesn't mean it's okay. And before they can resume, we get the two-minute warning. Start the clock. Let's get things rolling here. Elway as the Broncos operate from the Washington 28. Draw play. Winder to the 11. Tripped up by Morrison. Gain of 16 and a Bronco first down. Well, there's the run. What you're going to run. Dave Butts takes it inside. They turn out on man, and that's the hole that Sammy Winder goes in. They got Butts going to the inside, they got Mann going to the outside, and then they ran a draw right between them. And they got Wilhite in front of Winder blocking on Coleman. Elway back to throw, looking, throwing corner of the end zone. Flags are down. Mark Jackson was the target. Daryl Green was back there with him. They got all tangled up, and flags went down. Well, Daryl Green's in there arguing that it wasn't him, but it's going to go against him. In the end zone, number 28 defense. The ball will be placed at the one-yard line. First down. Let's look at it. It's going to happen right down here on the slot, man. Right there, they go up, they get the bump. Now watch in the end zone right there. Yeah, Daryl Darryl Green did. He went down for his knee. He gave him like a clipping motion. In fact, they're taking Daryl Green out because it's goal line now, but I've never seen a defensive back react like that. Well, he obviously felt it was going to be touchdown if he didn't do something like that, so he did it. It's Will Height. And it's Bronco touchdown, and another flag goes down. I think 
think they're going to throw it against the uh, Redskins, too. I think the touchdown will stand. Ah, oh, it's against Denver. Oh, they called holding. The Redskins were arguing like it was against them. Holding number 85 offense. Still first down. Holding on Joey Hackett. That, he's in motion. Watch 85. Joey Hackett. He's coming in motion. Blocking on the end man here. I guess he reached with his left arm and grabbed. But he didn't have to do it. No, he didn't. But that's a dumb penalty. All he had to do was bump him because Will Height was already by him. Oh, boy. That makes it first and goal from the 11 now. Elway will go back into the shotgun. This is a planned play. And Elway gets in. point rich carlos kubiak holding this would make it 13 7 if it's good and that's what it makes it back deep for the redskins carlos set to kick off yarber and keith griffin back there with him new names for the redskins carlos kick is deep to Garner and he'll keep it in the end zone. 13-7. Redskins over the Broncos. Denver nine plays, 65 yards. Kept it 446. Elway took it in from 11 yards out. The other thing about that play, Joe Gibbs said last week, when the Giants scored just before halftime, it took all the wind out of them at halftime. And the same thing happened this week. They had complete control of the game. Now with just a little over a minute left, Denver scores, and it's a different ballgame, and that's how they have to go in at halftime. A minute 13 remaining. Redskins with all three of their timeouts remaining. This is Kelvin Bryant. Spins back inside, gets to about the 25. They let the clock run. That's an interesting decision because it looks like with all three timeouts, that the Redskins have decided it's 13 to 7. We want to go in at halftime with that. I think, you know, this crowd gets excited, and I think what they want to do is keep them under control, not give the Broncos another big play before halftime. This crowd has come to life now, and they can be very vocal. Schrader just seeing that everybody's got all the information they need, they start monk in motion. 30 seconds remaining. Again, it's Bryant. And a flag goes down. That'll stop the clock. Steve Wilson came over to make the stop after a gain of one. And I would think, even though that does stop the clock, I would think that Denver will start taking timeout. They've only got one left. But I think with that, uh, you know, that second down, now they'll run again. Now I think the Broncos will take the timeout well, after this play. Number 81 another running offense. Play. Penalty declined. Third down. Art Monk limps over to the sideline. It was he who they called for holding. And he's in pain. He was out there trying to block on Steve Wilson, who was the guy that made the play. Third and three. If they don't get the first, I would imagine you're right. The Broncos will take the timeout. They have one remaining. Redskins are just about out of wide receiver. Here's Bryant. He's close. I think that's going to give him the first down. That little spin right at the end, Pat, I think he got the first down. So he the gained, Broncos won't take the timeout. He gained four, and they'll just let it run down now. Redskins have got right now as they head for the locker room, as do the Broncos, but Washington 
has a serious injury problem. They've lost a lot of key people. With the score, Washington 13, Denver 7. We'll kick off in the direction of Dwight Garner, Eric Yarber, and Keith Griffin. Harless kick is high and deep. Garner, a yard deep in the end zone. To the 24, the quarterback comparison in the first half. Well, you can see they're, they're pretty close and everything, except Schrader has the one TD throwing for it. Of course, Elway has his one. He, he ran for his. But look at the distance that they threw. But you see, neither one of them have been successful deep. Under 10 yards, Schrader got 58 of his yard. 10 to 10, 12 of his yard. 21 yards and 21 to 30. None in 30 to 40 or over 40. So it's been in that short and middle range area. And both these quarterbacks like to get it upfield. This is Rogers. Over the right side, maybe four. I think one of the good news part is they start this second half for the Redskins has to be that Art Monk is out there. Right. Remember, just before the half, he walked off uh, with a little injury, but he's back now. John Elway over on the sideline. Here's what he did in the first half. They look again, under 10 yards, 52 of his yards, 10 to 20, 33, 25, none in the long two areas. Which is, as I said, and John said, what both of them like to do, Roger. Big George out to about the 39, a red skin first down, a gain of 11. Rick Dennison tripped him up. Well, he got right in there between R.C. Thielman and Mark May over there on that right side. You know, Thielman is a guy that has really fit in with this team, playing right guard. He's a veteran, uh, you know, 10 years, and been traded from Atlanta. Had a reconstructive surgery, a real serious injury last year. Didn't know if he could come back. Come back starting and playing very well. First down, Washington. Their own 39. Rodgers again. Joe Gibbs said we're going to give him some work, and they're doing it. He got three. Fletcher on the stop. Let's watch RC again. Thielman. He's gonna he's gonna tie right in there to Mecklenburg. You see him right there. Turns him to the outside. Does a nice job. That was Greg Cragen he was blocking. But he got into him and then turned to the outside and put Cragen to his knee. Second and seven, and the unpleasant word about Anthony Jones is that he has torn ligaments in his right knee and he's out for the year. Second down. Art Monk can't come up with it. Incomplete pass. Dennis Smith was the nearest defender. Monk, as you probably heard Irv Cross say at the half, just got a hit on the shoulder. It stung a little bit, but he said and told Irv that he's okay. When they're healthy, Clark and Monk, the top receiving combo in the NFL. Clark out with a bad ankle. Third down and seven. Schrader looking upfield, no flags. Clint Didier was the intended receiver, and he's pointing and gesturing as if someone did something wrong to him, but there are no flags. Well, the Broncos were gesturing to the traitor threw it away. Well, that's what he's talking about. Didier had all the right to do that. I'll tell you, Smith hit him, hit him in the face, and grabbed his arm. He and had a trifecta against Didier. Well, he got his ankle, too, as he tried to make his cut. And that was a quad factor. Steve Cox back to punt for Washington. Will Height will field it. Got room. You heard him saying, okay, Gerald. And Gerald gets out to about the 28, stopped by Todd Bowles. 43-yard punt by Cox, 13-yard return. So the Redskins net 30 out of that one. And Denver will take over, trailing 13-7. Quite a guy, isn't he? You get rated before Christmas. Uh, whether you're naughty or nice, he's still there. Mobley was the man in motion. Elway fakes, gets it outside to Orson Mobley. Big Orson. 
hits Malat after a gain of 13. Tell you, you're right, Big Orson. When I saw him in practice yesterday, he was wearing a baseball cap. He fakes a block out there, and then he goes out for the pass. But he's wearing a baseball cap and a sweatsuit. I thought he was a tackle, just fooling around. I remember I asked you, who is that guy? Yeah, I thought it was one of the tackles. You see him unload at the end with that yeah. right arm, shoulder, forearm, hand, and wrist? It's Will Hyde and Winder behind Elway. First down, Broncos. Here comes a reverse. Vance Johnson around the corner. Gain of about six. Tim Morrison knocked him out of bounds. Yeah, one thing about these receivers of the Broncos, other than Steve Watson, they all have great speed. Vance Johnson, Mark Jackson, Clint Sant. The other thing, they all end in sun. To be a receiver, there it is right there. They all, you have to, to be a receiver, your name has to end in sun. Watson, Jackson, Johnson, Sampson. Then if you want to be thrown to as a tight end, your first name has to end in Sun. And that would be Orson. Yeah, we throw to him, 265 pounds, got three balls. Draw play. Winder. Couple short of a first. Curtis Jordan tripped him up with help from Rich Mallott. Sammy Winder lost that left shoe. Last week, I thought the shoe was a pigeon, or a pigeon was a shoe. Wasn't that something? That pigeon was flying out there. That ball hit the pigeon. Left him delirious, as you I said. Thought, yeah, he staggered around there and stayed right there. We had a delirious pigeon on the field at RFK. Talking about pigeons. Third and one. Dan Reeves wants something to be changed, and he finally gets the attention on the sideline. And the Broncos do call a timeout. Reeves was waiting. They got 11. Watson's on the sideline. They discussed it during the timeout. Elway straight ahead to Gerald Wilhite, who stumbled ahead for a gain of nine before he stopped by Barry Wilburn. And the Broncos get their first down. I tell you, that's the thing they couldn't do in the first half. They couldn't get any running game going. Here they have their short yardage offense. Now watch it, he's going to pop it right up the middle. It's a trap play. They come across and trap. The right guard, Mark Cooper, made the trap block, and Wilhite broke right off it. First down from the Washington 42. And all the way back to throw. Drills it down to Wilhite. Flag is down. A gain of nine. They might have hit Elway late. It's going to be on Dexter Manley. Manley was frustrated. He got double team. Watch him here. First to tackle block from Renfrew. He's holding him. Then the guard comes out and hits him. Now he's frustrated. He's off that. And he's going to give a kick. He tried to get the uh, left foot to the head. Number 72. Kicking an offensive player. First down. Kicking an offensive player. Manley has to be frustrated because he missed him. He took a kick and he missed. But see, now they're taking Manley out because he is frustrated. Marcus Cook replaces him. But he was frustrated by being held, then he was frustrated by being double teamed. And now he's just plain mad. So he took that size 14 and tried to put it to the head. Mobley goes in motion. Elway looks, and now he takes off and slides inside the 15. A five-yard scramble by Elway. Well, that one wasn't an organized one. The touchdown was an organized draw. That one was a scramble. Now the Redskins, Manley still, he's still, he's still arguing with the official. Here's the last play. We see he's looking, trying to throw right, can't find anyone, and just scrambles up the middle and takes that slide. Here comes a message. Illegal contact. While the quarterback was still in the pocket prior to the scramble. First down. Illegal contact prior to the scramble, he said. Yeah, what, what he meant was that, that the illegal contact was now, while Elway's trying to throw. There was illegal contact. So now he couldn't throw it. It looked like it was on Hackett to tight end. First and goal from the nine. 
Elroy back to throw it again. Outside it goes to Winder. Calvin Daniels right there with him, number 56. Pickup of three and Winder a little slow and limping up. You know, one thing about this, we talked about the running game and how important it is that a guy like John Elway, with his receivers, he needs that running game just to keep things going, to kind of glue everything together. When you don't have it, you don't score any points. Then when you get it, you start moving the ball the way the Broncos are now. Watson and Johnson split wide to the left. They go with two tight ends. And Elway gives the winder and winder. Ties it at 13. the Broncos the lead. As Carlos kicks off, short. Garner feels it at the six. It is knocked down at about the 21. Harden on the stop. Let's watch a block that Mark Cooper makes right here on Dave Butts. He gets him going this way, then Winder gets a big hole. This is the guy that made the play right there, Mark Cooper. Watch him on butt, straight ahead, gets him going, gets him going, keeps him going. Look at that hole in there for Winder to cut back in. Santa Claus could have took it in that hole. <laughs> like a, a bowl full of jelly. Ricky Sanders put wide to the left and Monk to the right. Warren moves Terry Orr in the backfield with Rogers. Nothing doing, and there might have been a fumble. Mecklenburg was the first man there. I'll tell you, if anyone doesn't think that a crowd can can pump up a football team, they're crazy. Look at this. You can just feel the intensity level of this Bronco defense. Watch them. They're scrambling, guys jumping, diving, wiving, the whole thing. Mecklenburg and Hunley. It was Mecklenburg who jumped over the blocker. I know it. Kelvin Bryant replaces Rogers. Four goes in motion. Schrader back to throw with time. Incomplete. He was juggling. Ricky Sanders had it, but without possession. Watch it here. That's an optional cut. He starts to the inside. Louis Wright has him to the inside, so he slides to the outside. Had it, and as he was going out, he bobbled it. That was a good call. He didn't have it. No, he didn't. Third down and 12. Redskins at their own 20. Schrader is 0 for 3 this half, and he'll have to try it again. Rule on Jones. Out of the blocks in a hurry, Jacoby might have moved. That's what he's going to say. That, that's what did happen. Watch Jacoby. He's down there. He's not in a three-point set. See that little move there? When he moved that left hand, then that was movement. And that said, okay, you can go. Ruan Jones comes across. The penalty's on the Redskins. And that'll make it third and 17. They're out in a hurry. Sanders wide left, Monk to the right. Third down and 17 from the 15. I wouldn't be surprised if they run it here. Trader back. Picked off by Mike Harden. Pass intended for Orr. Broncos get it in good shape. That's 
the first turnover today, and that's a big one. You know, that's why I said I wouldn't have been surprised if they run it. I'm not second guess. I think they had it because they were losing control here. This Denver Bronco team is pumped up. You don't want to force anything. Here, I think Jay Schrader had long yardage. He had to force something. He forces it. There's Mike Hart. And he comes up with the interception. I think they would have been better running the ball, getting things back under control. Elway asked for quiet as the Broncos come out at the Redskins 36. Elway going right to work. Running, throwing in the direction. Charles Mann in the direction of Vance Johnson. Mann and Manley chasing Elway. I think Elway just threw that ball away. I'll tell you, he's a tough guy, though. You know, you look at both these quarterbacks, they're an awful lot alike. I mean, they're kind of big, tall, strong-armed, blonde-haired, blue-eyed guys, but they're tough guys. I mean, they can stand in there and take those hits and then jump up and go and do it again. Youth may have something to do with that, too. That's right. And not a lot of use or abuse <laughs> on the body. Orson Mobley split down at the bottom of your picture. Elway looking right. Has Watson, and Watson gets you away from one tackle. Curtis Jordan finally brought him down. Morrison hurt his hand or his arm. It was Morrison that Watson got away from. Well, he should hurt his hand or his arm the way he tackles there. You can't just reach out and grab like that. Of course, he did fall down. He did slip before that. And Watson gave him a little move. But that's one thing. A defensive back has to be able to cover. And the next thing he has to be able to do is tackle in the open field. Morrison went out. Alvin Walton. One of the Redskin defensive backs as they smother that play right at the line of scrimmage after a gain of one. Olkowitz was the first Redskin there. There's Morrison over on the sideline. I think he got that when he when he when he reached out. It, I think he dislocated a finger on his right hand. That's what they're doing. They're trying to pop it back in. And they just take it and they just pull it. It pops right back in there most of the time. But it hurts. You don't look though. Second and ten. Elway drops. Watson. A touchdown, but a penalty marker down at the goal line. Watson came up with a catch. Barry Wilburn was on him man to man, and it's either going to be against Watson or against Wilburn. That's obvious. That's against Wilburn it's a touchdown well, you're going to see 45 as Wilburn I watch you with the balls in the air looked like he pin him with the right hand before the ball got there Harless for the extra point now 19 yard touchdown from Elway to Watson Harless to make it 21 13 7.38 now left in the third quarter. Things happening very quickly. And Denver up now by eight points. 56 yards, 56 seconds is all it took. Elroy to Watson. Made it 21-13. Carlos signals that he is ready to kick it off. Garner. Downs it four yards deep in the end zone. Let's watch the pass protection, Pat, on the touchdown here. We can start it off here. We can see how they turn out on both sides. We can stop it right here. Now, see the line? They got this thing turned out, turned out on the backside. That gives him the lane to throw the ball in. We see how they turn everything. And then, of course, look at the other end, the great catch by Steve Watson. Redskins start from their own 20. Seven and a half minutes left, third quarter. Schrader back to throw. 
Underneath to Monk. Monk gets his first down. Gets out of bounds by Dennis Smith. Tomorrow on CBS, the 49ers against the Patriots. Two other teams with the playoffs in mind. New England's chances look better after the Jet loss today. Well, and the 49ers, you know, if they can get healthy, they're still one of the best teams oh, yeah. in the NFL. All you have to do is ask their opponents. They don't want to play them. <laughs> First down, Redskins at their own 37. Rogers. Bounces out of the pile, gets up to about the 40, stopped by Jim Ryan. Rogers got three. You see number 57, Tom Jackson? He was in there, too, in that play. You know, Tom Jackson's been playing in this league for a heck of a long time. In fact, this could be his last game, his last year. 35 years old, 14-year veteran. He used to hate me. He used to come over to the sideline and yell at me. Then I would yell at him from the sideline. Yesterday, he talked to me. I think the reason he talked to me, he had the flu. I think he tried to give it to me. <laughs> he had the Taiwan flu going around here, this team. Just before that, you said he was a nice guy. Well, I thought, you know, he's a nice guy. You know, you get out, you're not coaching anymore, you're not competing, everyone forgets, you shake hands. Then I thought, you know, last time I was here, he didn't talk to me. This time, he come over and talked to me. And you know what he said? He said, there's a lot of flu going around here. All the players have it. Don't talk to any of them. Don't let any of them breathe on you. And then we found out he has it. Well, he has it. And I was talking to him. He was breathing on me. <laughs> I like, I got a lot of room for flu and stuff. It can all fit in there and not even bother anything. <laughs> but I'll tell you, I like that guy. I mean, I like, he's a competitor. He's a fiery guy. I mean, he's, that's what it should be. I mean, you go out and you compete. You don't like anyone. And, you know, you just go after it. Redskins did not get the playoff. It took too much time. 30-second clock expired, and the flag came flying. That'll make it third and long. Game prior to the snap offense, still third down. I'll tell you, you know, you know, we talked just before halftime. Remember where they, where the Broncos got their first touchdown? A week ago, that happened when the Giants got a touchdown just before halftime. Against the Giants, it took a lot of wind out of their sails, and I think it did the same thing here today. No doubt. Third and seven. They're back at the 40 now. Trader up under the center. Art Monk in motion. Broncos put a blitz on. Monk dives and can't come down with it. Dennis Smith was the nearest defender. Schrader was under pressure. I'll tell you, though, Schrader did make a heck of a throw. I mean, he was back there. He had a little pressure on him, and he, he threaded that needle between two defenders in Dart Monk. The pressure coming from his backside from both Rulon Jones and Carl Mecklenburg. But he got rid of it. Now, watch the throw. I mean, he threads that thing right in there. Look, there's a defender on the outside, inside, and he throws it right through. Monk should have had that ball. Will Hyde back deep for Denver. Cox's kick is a rocket. Takes a Redskin bounce, bounces backwards, and they down it at about the nine. Monty Coleman is down to down it. 51 yard punt by Cox takes the good bounce. 540 left, third quarter at the playoff. Gene Lamb and Winder are the running backs. Winder. Nothing doing. Loss of one. The Minnesota Vikings still with playoff, playoff hopes, too. Play Houston. 3.30 Eastern time it begins with the NFL today. You know, of all those teams that are in it for that last wild card spot in the NFC, looks like Minnesota could have the best shot to be there. Jerry Burns in his first year as a head coach up there has done a heck of a job. He really has. They have become a good, solid team. Winder and Lang behind Elway. John retreats to the end zone. Gets it out to Winder. From behind by Neil Opowitz with a gain of nine. 
Kelvin Bryant over on the Redskin bench. They took him into the locker room at the half. I assume for x-rays and then he came back out. I think he has to be hurt and I don't think you'd be that down with this score in this situation of the game. I think there's some there's some injury. He has something's bothering him and it's not the score in the situation. Third and two at the 16 as Elway brings him out. Will Height now is the lone setback. Redskins showing an all out rush. Elway trying to get it outside to Vance Johnson. Daryl Green out there on the coverage. And Monty Coleman out there to help. And he put the pressure. On that, Elway. I think that was a big series for the Redskin defense because they're going to get good ball position here, good field position. I think that was a big play by Daryl Green. Horan will be back to kick. Eric Yarber back deep for the Redskins. 4.07 left to play in the third quarter. Broncos using as much of the clock as they can. Trying to get all those Redskins picked up. They snap it with one second left to go. Not a good kick. Yarber. Upended by Tony Lilly, but a good return by Yarber. 39 yard punt. And a 28-yard return. I'll tell you, that's a great return. But a guy can come up and end it up something like that. That guy's going to make all Madden for this one. Watch that. There's no fair catches in this deal. This guy's only five foot eight, just activated for this game. Watch him. I mean, he's a reckless runner. What? Jump, dive, twirl, spin, whatever. Oh, and hold on to it throughout that. Yeah, that's a look. Look, he's happy. I mean, that helmet hardly fits the head. Just activated. The Redskins, as you said, do indeed have it in good shape. Inside the Bronco 30. George Rogers behind Terry Orr in the backfield. Rogers. Picked up a couple. Andre Townsend made the stop. See, I think that was a big series. When you go back to look at this game, that was a big series when the Redskins could hold them without a first down. Keep them down there. Quieted the crowd down, noticeably. Well, then, yeah, then, then, then they get good field position. They get a good punt return. Now they can get back into this game. Kelvin Bryant back in the game. Monk is wide right. Sanders wide left. Second and eight. Two tight ends lined up side by side. They come in that direction to Bryant. Bryant spins down to about the 21. Friggin on the stop. Gain of three. For those of you who might not know, Pittsburgh beat the Jets earlier today, 45-24. Abercrombie had three touchdowns. Another long day for O'Brien. Sacked five times, intercepted three times. The Jets just can't get on track. They started off 10-1, and, and now... They can't do anything right. Third and five. Big down here. Schrader checking the defense. Starts Monk in motion. He'll be looking at him. Flag down. Monk had it, lost it. Tony Lilly on the coverage, but it's going to be a holding penalty against the Redskins. That had to be one that was late that happened right in front of the quarterback because Jerry Seaman, the referee, called it. And that's usually a late holding. Because if it's an early one, the umpire calls it. If it's on the side, then the side guy does. Illegal use of hands to the face. Number 73 offense. Penalty be declined. Fourth down. Mark May, and I was about to ask you if you would decline this. Yeah, see, right there, Mark May gets it right there. See now. The referee is right behind Schrader. See the flag come out? He saw that right at the end. Schrader stays to hold for Zendejas, who will try from 41 yards out. 
Yeah, I would think that I would make Zendejas kick it. Yeah, I, I think this is a very, very shaky kicker. From 41 yards out, straight into hole. Good snap. No good kick. Broncos will take over. 219 left third quarter. That's worse than a very shaky kicker. That could be close to being gone, kicker. I think it happened in the in in San Francisco. He just you know got all shook up about that grass. And then he's playing here on grass, and I don't know that he can even get the ball up over the line anymore. Watch it. This is a line drive hook. I mean, that didn't even have a chance. I, I, in fact, I wouldn't be surprised if the Redskins had another shot here. I wouldn't be surprised if they let Steve, Steve Cox, Cox kick it. Elway, draw play. And the Redskins smother Gerald Wilhite just as soon as he gets the ball. A loss of three. It's Manley and Olkowitz who read the draw play. You know, one thing with, with with Jay Schrader, even though he doesn't have Gary Clark in there in his arm, you don't want to put this thing into uh, Cruz too soon. I'm talking about the Broncos. I mean, I don't think you want to get too conservative too soon. That's always a mistake. A mistake too often made. No way drops back to throw it. Incomplete. Intended for Will Height. Covered by Malat. Going back to the game summary, the Broncos have scored 21 eight po uh, straight points. Jones and Clark are out again for the Redskins, and Dejas has had a long afternoon. Well, you know that's eight points. So one was a long field goal, and. Six points in the field goal in the extra point. So it's third down. Elway again. It's a planned draw play, and it, this time he is hammered by Monty Coleman, looking for some place to go, and Denver will have to punt. Well, and the and the Redskins again are going to get good offensive position. This Redskin defense is doing the job now to keep that position. Now the offense has to take advantage of it once they get out there. Yarber goes back deep. Michael Horan has punted five times today, average 44. That's good enough. But the last one, Yarber almost broke, put the Redskins down in field goal range. Into a pack of Broncos. Back to the 45. A return of 10. Washington takes over its own 45. 38 seconds remaining in the third quarter. That's the real thing. I wonder, is there anyone up there that there's no people? We put some stuff up there. We never put any people yeah, up there. There's some now. stuff up there. Yeah, yeah, we, there's no guys up there like watching the game or anything. Not no. There's supposed to be one guy up there. There is a guy up there. The man, you know, oh. the man in the moon. <laughs> Sanders. The Bronco 35. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to. I never want to go up there. You know, a lot of people say someday I want to go. You can put in your thing. I'm not going. I'm not one of them. They can have it, not me. I, have, I have trouble on trains now. I, get I was going to say there's no trains going up there. You oh, can't I get know. There. I, I went through Sing Sing the other night in a prison break. Whew. They wouldn't let you out of there even. <laughs> That's the end of the third quarter with the score: Denver 21, Washington 13. We now pause for a word from your local station where the Broncos lead the Redskins 21 13. 
Redskins give to Rodgers. Rodgers cuts back right side down to about the 31. Ricky Hunley tripped him up after a gain of four. Their favorite play. You know, the Redskins have plenty of time, but they're down eight points, meaning that they need two scores. And this is where I'm sure they wish they had Gary Clark. Second down and seven. They're at the Bronco 31. They're probably going to run again. Kelvin Bryant usually comes in in the passing, and Rodgers in for the run. Rodgers is the deep back. Rulon Jones. After Schrader. Pass is ruled incomplete. Sanders saying I had it. Louis Wright. The defender. Steve Cox getting ready. Putting on the square toe. And indeed, if they have to kick again, it would seem it's going to be Cox. Uh, you know, he's trying to bring Ricky Sanders back, and he did. He brought him back too much, and he one-hopped it in there. He had the pressure from Rulon Jones. He had to let go. Now Bryant's in. Broncos have had good pressure, but they have yet to sack Schrader today. Bryant, the intended receiver, incomplete. They put the pressure on again. Here comes Cox. We know we would know one thing that Cox can't get at that distance. He's had a 55 yarder earlier in the year. Made a 57 yarder as well. He's then, got the leg. And then with this altitude, you know that he can get it there. This will be 48. Twenty-one to sixteen. Fourteen oh seven left in the contest, and Denver lead is now five. Steve Cox, who just hit the forty-eight yard field goal, will kick off. A knuckler, going to be tough to handle, makes its way into the end zone, and they keep it there. Does Gene Wang? You don't see that much, Pat. Dean Hamill is on the kickoff and punt coverage of these Redskins. He's already made a couple tackles today, but there's a big 275-pound guy running down on kicks. And he's usually one of the first ones down there. I know, and he got some 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 stuff there. Watch him now. The thing's out of the bounds. He just looks for a guy to run over. They just bump in them say, well, what are you doing on this team? Why do we want to... <laughs> little fast guys. Why do we want to continue this? No way to Winder. Winder outside the 25 to the 26 and a gain of six. Olkowitz tripped him up. I'll tell you, the left guard, Keith Bishop, got a good block. I think you'll see Dave Butts is going to come through. Watch Butts here. He's coming through. See him 65? Now watch Bishop there just knock him down when he's getting ready to make the play, and then that's what opened the hole. You know that Keith Bishop's a pretty good-looking guy for an offensive lineman. He sure is. Usually they're not good-looking. Well, they don't work at it much. Elway. To Mark Jackson. On the money. Darrell Green stopped him, but a Bronco first down, a gain of 17. There we have Jackson out here. Now, again, he has great speed and great quickness. You know, he, he's one of those guys that can run full speed and still make a move off of it. So he's going to be something. He's only a rookie, but he has all those abilities that you have to have. Someday I think he'll be the starter, and someday I think he'll be a star in this league. He's got those same attributes that a Duper and a Clayton have. Rock way to Wango. Olkowitz, the first Redskin to hit him. A gain of two. Hey, when you run in there in that middle of that Redskin line and you have Dave Butts there and Daryl Grant on the other side and Olkowitz in the middle, you're running into a real strength. So you have to do things. You have to, like, trap them. 
You have to influence them. You have to do things because you just can't overpower them. Second and eight. Wilburn comes out with Watson to Elway's right. They never got the ball snapped. Everybody left and the ball was still there. Yeah, that's the center. I mean, he's the guy that knows. You know, no, he can never be offsides. Ball start prior to the snap, number seven offense. Sometimes the quarterback gets up there, Pat, and he forgets the starting count. You know, and he'll start out there, and, and that's what happened. Elway started out, Butts was on the center's nose, Billy Bryant. So, of course, when Elway moves, then Butts can go. And Bryant probably said, oh, no. And when your quarterback moves, and you're the center, all you can do is just kind of hunker in there and take it. And that's exactly what he did, second and 13. Elway looking almost caught by Mobley. He got one hand on it. Monty Coleman was covering him. I'll tell you, here we here we go. Here we, we see a double team. See Brian this time has to pass protect Buck. Cooper started out on him, then Brian goes. The play is over. Butts gives one more. Boom, Brian gives one more. Butts gives one more. There's about three loads after the play. Third and 13. Pressure on Elway. Man, chases. He gets it to Mark Jackson. Does Elway, and that's going to be a little bit shy of a first down. I don't know that it is. It depends on how they mark this. I think yeah. it is the first. Jackson did a heck of a job. He was right in front of that marker, and he just stood there. So did Elway do a heck of a job. Well, yeah, he throws it. But watch him just stand there. See, he didn't work back, so he had the first down. He's working on Wilburn here. Now watch him. He gets back there. Now he goes back to the sideline and just stands right there. He can't work back anymore. He'd lose the first down. That's an excellent play by both. Winder is the lone setback, and that's Mobley in motion. Elway back to throw. Watson, and he has it and out of bounds inside the Redskin 20. Week after week. It was set up with great pass protection. The Bronco line in this second half has really come on. They had a blitz. They gave Elway time. Look what he could do. Here's Watson working against Barry Wilburn. See, he started in there, and then he let him get deep. Now, I would think there should have been a safety over there. Wilburn looked like he was playing short, expecting deep help. Watson goes left, along with Mark Jackson this time. Off play, Winder. And Sammy Winder scrambles out of the pack and gets down to about the 13. Four tough yards. Rich Malott brought him down finally. Let's see that play again, the big play. Here's Steve Watson. Here's Wilburn. Wilburn hits him here and lets him get by. It looks like he expected something over here that he didn't get. But watch it down here in the bottom. See, he gets the bump. Now Watson gets beyond him. Looked like that safety was going to come over. He took a bad angle and didn't get over. The same thing happened to him last week against the Giants. Elway looking right. Mark Jackson. At about the one. Daryl Green was the closest Redskin. A gain of 12. They said Mark Jackson was going to be a star in the league someday. That day may be now. Today. Boy. H-O-Y means today. Clock running, nine and a half minutes left to play. Jackson has four catches for 51 yards. Hackett and Mobley, the two tight ends, lined up to the right. Rimsburg and Stutter to the left. Stutter on the outside. A lot of 
popping going on in there. Gerald Wilhite attempting to get in, and he didn't. Monty Coleman made the first hit for the Redskins. I'll tell you, the Redskins have had two tough weeks. They're a team they already know they're in the playoffs. They have to be wondering what they're going to do. They, the need, to get some, they need to get some people well is one of the things they need to do. Broncos are in and playing for the home field advantage throughout the playoffs. It is Sammy Winder into the end zone, Broncos. Second touchdown for number 23. And the crowd is back on their feet. for the extra point with Kubiak holding. Carlos into the net. Watch Joey Hack at number 85 lead. He's going to lead a trap right there. Binder is running off the trap. He has the hole into the end zone. And so with eight and a half minutes left to play, the Broncos now lead 28-16 over the Redskins. The barefoot on the kickoff. White Garner in the middle. For the Redskins, Keith Griffin to his left and Todd Bowles to his right. He hit the ground behind it. Garner will operate. Hit from behind by Hunley. And Rick Dennison brought him down. Now there's a guy hustling out there to get the tee. I like that. Uh, uh, Turn it look, on now. Believe that face. I mean, that's determination. Bring it back. Give me five. Nice going. I'll tell you, he's proud of himself. I got what, it. What a job. He wants to get some hits. Going back for some oxygen. <laughs> Washington ball, Kelvin Bryant in the game, Washington their own 23. Schrader will have to throw it almost every down from here on, and does to Didier. And Clint gets to the 45, a gain of 22, Randy Robbins on the stop. Tomorrow on CBS, the NFL Today, that's one of the games you'll be seeing, the 49ers at New England. It begins at 12.30 with the NFL Today. Clock is running. Redskins hurrying. Denver leading. 28-16. Trader has his time. And he has Art Monk. And Monk is in the end zone for the Redskins. A strike from Trader from 55 yards out. Dennis Smith was the nearest Denver defender. What a shot from Schrader to Monk. I'll tell you, with the arm that Jay Schrader had, and we said this earlier, that you can't start to sit on the lead. The Broncos didn't. The Broncos just scored. And then the Redskins come right back. Watch outside. Monk there is hit by Louis Wright early. Smith is the second guy in that zone. He lets Monk get behind him. And I'll tell you, with Monk behind him, and Schrader's arm, you know it's going to be a touchdown. Zendejas in to try the extra point. Schrader will hold. That one's down the middle. 28. 23. Seven and a half minutes left to play. Uh, marker down on the extra point, however. Offside, number 49 defense, extra point is good. Five-yard penalty will be assessed on the succeeding kickoff. But Dennis Smith had two tough plays, a touchdown pass over him. Then he lines up offsides. And Washington keeps it close, 28-23. Denver leads. 
Ken Bell and Gene Wang back deep for the Broncos and Steve Cox all set to kick off for the Redskins. Another line driver that bounces over the head and out of the end zone. Cox kicking off that time from the 40 after the penalty on the extra point. Jay Schrader, Clint Didier. New Redskin record, and he broke the record held by that man, Sonny Jurgensen. No one ever threw it better. He does Redskin radio. I don't think Sonny knew it was broken. I think he's just hearing now. Just, he, it does, hey, Sonny, he just broke your record. You go, huh? Oh. Sonny just heard it. What? Eh? Not supposed to do that. Jackson in motion. No way. Going back to throw. Incomplete intended for Jamie Hackett. Joey Hackett, sorry. Looking for a flag, but there are none. I tell you, it could be slippery out there, Pat, because Joey Hackett fell down, and uh, Curtis Jordan fell down, and one other defender fell down. There were like three guys fell down all around that ball. That stretch of the field is pretty well worn. 28, 23, excuse me, John. No, this field is one of those new grass prescription turf fields or right. something, and they have heaters underneath it. A lot of fancy stuff here. All the way back to throw again. Looking for Mowgli. And he comes down with it. Big Orson Mowgli. He didn't know the ball was anywhere close to him. Hey, that was a great adjustment, though. A great side adjustment. You see Monty Coleman, a linebacker, number 51, is isolated on him out here as a wide receiver. Look at that ball is thrown right up over his right shoulder. That was a heck of an adjustment. But see, they can't put a defensive back on him because they already got their defensive backs or corners on two wide receivers. So they put Mobley out here, and then the Redskins have to counter with a linebacker. Winder and Lang are the two runners now. Clock running. Elway will take his time. The 30-second clock got down to eight before he did anything. And Winder goes to the 45-yard line of the Redskins. Rich Malott tripped him up. Winder got three. Well, you know what that pass did? That, that got the Broncos out in a position where now, if they don't make the first down, or if they can't kick a field goal, at least they're going to back the Redskins up and make them have to drive the length of the field. So that was a big play. Second and seven, 28-23, Denver leads. Watson comes wide to the right. Jackson goes to the left. They use two tight ends. Mobley was the man in motion. He's out to Mobley. He is hit and hit hard by Alvin Walton. That pass completion only got a yard, but it keeps the clock running. You know, it's one thing. We had the story about Clarence Kay, who's a normal starting tight end for the, the Broncos, and he was suspended by Dan Reeves, and he was put on the reserve list for, for drug use. And But maybe that's, maybe that's something that's helping this team. I mean, maybe if Kay were here, you wouldn't see Mobley doing what he's doing or a hack at playing. I mean, sometimes... These guys are making big plays, and the reason they're playing is because K is on reserve. That'll make it third and six. Four wide receivers for the Broncos. Elway underneath Charles Mann, the third sack. You know, that's that same place. Elway slips in that same area where the receivers slip. Watch him. Now he sees a rush coming, too. There's a big rush. He starts to get back. He just slips. His knee just went buckle right out, out from under. You see I think they had him anyway. They had him surrounded, and man was right in front of him. Oh, yeah. He was he was going to go down one way or another, whether he caused it or they caused it. Loss of 11. Moran back to kick. And Eric Yarber standing back at the 10 for the Redskins. 28-23 the score. Broncos leading. Four and a half minutes left to play. Bearcat signal. 
The Redskins will take over at the 16. First and 10 at the Redskins, a 44-yard punt by Horan. Make it the 11 yard line instead of the 16 that's where they'll start from Redskin offensive unit out they trail by five with still enough time remaining and all three of their timeouts remaining the playoff picture you know the team that has to be the most excited right now are those New York Giants I'm sure they're watching this they play tomorrow but if the Redskins lose then they would clinch the Eastern Division today Sanders is wide left Wide right. Schrader back. Hit Kelvin Bryant. Tom Jackson was the nearest defender. That ball could have been caught, should have been caught. I think it went right through his hands and hit him on his shoulder pad. Let's came look at it again. It looks like it hit him right on the left shoulder, didn't it? Came popping out of there. I mean, that's one thing. Schrader does drill the ball. It just goes right through his hands yep. and hit his shoulder pad. Same formation. Didier and Warren, the two tight ends, lined up side by side. They're over on the right. Schrader back to throw. Rulon Jones in his face for Didier. Pass picked off by Mike Harden. His second interception of the day. Still more room for Harden. Run down from behind by Art Monk. That should lock it up. He was trying to hit Clint Didier. Watch Didier, the inside guy, coming right down here, right down the middle. Now, he's man to man by Smith. Harden is the safety. Harden reads it, comes over. Didier had Smith beat. That's who Schrader was looking at, but he didn't see Harden. 31-yard return with the interception by Harden. First down, Broncos at the Redskins, 15. Winder and Wilhite. over the left side no gain tripped up by Daryl Grant Jay Schrader showing a little frustration off these last two weeks I think you'd have to well you know that was his second one he had six interceptions last week I know what he saw that time he saw Didier he saw Dennis uh, Smith on a man-to-man -man. he saw a man-to-man -man, and he thought he had Smith beat but he didn't see Harden who was sitting back there as a free safety who came across second and now about 11 at the 15 winders the lone setback Watson is out to the right he always looks in that direction now throws it away he did throw that one away he threw it darn near into the south stand he sent that ball in to be x-ray look he's going like that I think that means runner I think what he means is give me some runners doesn't that mean when you go like that? That's what it means to me. I don't think he wants to come out of there. I think he has his receivers, which would be like four wide receivers, or his runners, which would be running back. He would want to be careful here of an interception, of course, with the score 28-23. And he has his two running backs in there, so that's what he was asking for, running backs. A field goal here would uh, mean the Redskins really had some work to do. Open. It was Jackson, but he couldn't get it there. Now, Carlos will come on. This will make it, if Carlos is good, 31 23. And that missed extra point early in the game looms as a factor once again. Once you miss an extra point in any football game, it always seems to come back to haunt you. And because of that, they really didn't have to force the touchdown right. here. They can be satisfied with the field goal. This will be from 32 yards out for Carlos. 3.14 left to play. Carlos is perfect. 
And now they increase the lead to eight. I don't see anybody sitting down. I don't see anyone leaving either. High kick in deep to Dwight Garner, right at the goal line. And cut down at the 20. Randy Robbins knocked him down. We started off slowly at Mile High Stadium here in Denver, but since then, the scoreboard has been clicking, and Denver just scored again. 31-23, they lead. Elway's thrown for one, rushed for one. Anthony Jones and Gary Clark, both receivers for the Redskins. Clark, their outstanding wide receiver, been injured. He has a bad left ankle and is out. Hurt it early. And that obviously has hurt the Redskins and Jay Schrader. Elvin Bryant behind Schrader this time. Exactly three minutes left to play. Schrader back to throw. Monk open. Mike Harden twisted him down. A gain of 27. They'll move the sticks. Monk's had a big day. Redskins are going without a huddle because, again, with just a little over two minutes, they have to think in terms of two scores. They need a touchdown and a field goal. They have all their timeouts remaining. Clock is running. Trader back. Didier. To the Bronco 40. And again, they line up in a hurry. This telecast is presented by authority. The National Football League is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consider the Denver Broncos and the National Football League is prohibited. Trader back again. Complete intended Sanders. Tony Lilly applied the leather. I tell you, he applied all the leather he had. Tony Lilly was in there, saw Sanders coming to the inside, and he really teed off on him. Well, watch Lilly. He's number 22. That's what those safeties, anytime a receiver comes to the inside, they want to make him pay. Watch Lilly unload. Look. He paid. One second to go. They've got one more play before the two-minute warning. Then they have all three timeouts remaining. Didier at about the one-foot line. Clint Didier playing with a broken bone in his right hand. Down at the one-foot line by Randy Robbins. A gain of 39, and this one isn't over. Didier has always been a big play guy for these Redskins. Remember Joe Gibbs said last night, he's not going to be able to block because he can't hit, but we can use him as a receiver. He bounced into the end zone. They spotted it to one foot line. Describe. You got jumbos and you got your light and medium, and this is the old heavy jumbo. They ought to just push the whole thing back into the end zone. George Rogers is the deep back. He'll carry the ball more than likely. Schrader. Roger. I don't think he made it. These are big plays for the Bronco defense because they have to take off because they want the Redskins to have to use time or timeouts. Because the Redskins need this, then they need another score. again didn't make it again Reagan was the first man there and that precious time clicks down Redskins. the Redskins take a timeout there's no one that plays better goal line than the Denver Broncos we were talking to Joe Gibbs about that last night that's what he said, he said they practice in training camp 15 minutes a day just on goal line charges said he's never heard of anyone else ever doing that he said we have some stuff for it something special but they are really tough and they always have been they always have been it, the Broncos have always played and that's Joel Collier who's always been here have always played the best goal line defense that's ever been played 
Redskins, the city was tough at one time, so was Pittsburgh. Redskins had it first and goal at the one foot line. And now it's third and goal from the one foot line. Well, the big thing that it did is taking time off the clock. One, it's also made them use one timeout, which they didn't want to do because the longer it takes, the more they're going to be forced to go for an onside kick. Had they scored right away and kept their timeout, they wouldn't have had onside kick. Now, by not scoring, they're using their timeout. I think they're going to have to onside kick if they do score. Yeah, and I think if they do score, we're going to see some of those special things that Joe Gibbs was talking about. I don't know what they are. It may be a pass to one of those jumbos. Could be. Rodgers is the deep back. They fumble the snap. Rodgers gets in nevertheless. He almost dropped the ball for the second time on the exchange from the center. And that may have set something up. I tell you, Jay Schrader's come up with a couple of big plays on those things. That's what you get for having big, strong hands. You can do that. That ball's out there, but he's able to grab it, get it out, falling down, tripping, and still get that ball to George Rogers. I'll tell you, that was a great play by Jay Schrader. Look at that, fumbling the ball, falling down, tripping, and getting it out there. Boom. He just disappeared for a minute. The Dejas extra point is good. And it's 31-30. And you go back to the early time after the first Redskin touchdown, and this is the difference. I'll tell you, and that thing just sits up there the whole game. Think that those guys that are on his right will shift over to this side. No kind of shift. He's lined up as if he is coming in this direction. Broncos obviously expecting it. Through the pack and fielded by Will Height on the fly. And he doesn't take any chances. I have no idea what that was. That's what Joe Gibbs was saying. He said, well, what was that? We didn't have a chance. Redskins didn't have a chance to get that. I don't understand that one. It wasn't a regular deep kick, nor was it an onside. Boy, that'll make you shake your head. That'll make the flight a little bit longer, going back. Here's his reaction to that kick. That's Wayne Severe. He, he is discussing it with, if you could call it that. A minute, 24 remaining. Winder and Will Height behind Elway. Redskins with two timeouts left. Back to Will Height. Got seven, maybe eight. Curtis Jordan tripped him up and the Redskins call their second time out. So they have one remaining. The coordinating producer of the NFL on CBS is Charles H. Milton III. Our cohesive producer, Robert D. Stenner. Directed so capably and ably as always by Sandy Grossman. The NFL Today's staff and our staff. You look at all that list. We travel a pretty good package, don't we? Well, I mean, you can't say all those guys were here. See, some of those guys were in the studio, too, that are on this. We did have one guy that was on there who was the associate producer, Richie Zions, and today's his birthday. So I think we can say happy birthday to Richie Zions. He's getting at an age now where he has to start calling himself Richard. And has to stop keeping track of birthdays. Yeah, and has to wear uh, regular shoes and stuff. And maybe someday he'll be Richard Zions the third or something That's like right. that. I'll tell you, I think these Redskins did what they had to do today, Pat. I mean, they're they're not good, but I think that you know they had some tough time, things happen to them offensively. I think they came back and got that in today. Elway takes it straight ahead. The Redskins take their last time out. They stopped the clock with a minute 12 remaining, and that's all they can do. Elway got the first down. Did you see Gerald Wilhite? He did a backflip. 
standing back by the huddle. Well, that's how you celebrate the crowd. The crowd starts to get fired up, and that's Will Hyde's celebration. So he just does a backflip back in the hut. Look, he's checking his back. <laughs> Used to be able to do that when you're a rookie. You get I a little mean, older, it gets harder to celebrate. He looked like Greg Luganis back there. But I think these played the Giants right now, Pat, as winning the Eastern Division. Well, I remember that's another game you'll see tomorrow. Important to Dallas there. Faint hope still alive. And Minnesota in that same boat. Bill Parcells, I remember saying to us earlier in the year, you know, I'm not sure about my team. I'm not sure how good they are. I think the doubts should be removed. I think so, especially when, when he can beat the Redskins twice. You know, when he can beat them at home and then at their place. When he can do that thing, they should. Joe Gibbs knows he's going to be there. He wants to be peaking as he goes in. With the injuries, it's going to be tough. He needs to get a lot of people well. The Broncos, 31. The Redskins, 30. And now they shake hands. Dan Reeves and Joe Gibbs, good friends. Been a troubled week for Dan Reeves. What with the Clarence K situation. But nevertheless, they win by one over the Redskins, 31-30.